Hi, my name is Aliana and I'm joined with Prabhnoor, Luke and Tori and we are CMMV partners. Today we will be presenting our sustainable solution for growing Canadian food waste. We'll first start off with our proposal and then touch on the landscape that demonstrates that there's no existing services for the solution we provide. We will then move on to the projected value generation as well as our growth forecasts and finally finish off with how risks can be mitigated regarding the solution. The solution we propose encompasses offering a simple logistical service for large retailers to manage their food waste. Currently, waste is generated on a magnitude of millions of tons every year by retailers, and the majority of this currently goes to landfills, causing excessive methane and carbon dioxide emissions as this organic waste decomposes. What we propose in lieu of that, however, is to offer a waste collection service operating on a similar logistical model as Frito-Lay to collect this waste from retailers and to manage that collection service in a feasible, uh, well-run way via an API app integration for the retailers we serve. After the waste is collected, it'll be sent to centralized distribution locations where we will have an AI-trained algorithm to determine the most sustainable and revenue generating channel for that waste to be redirected to, whether it's uh, repurposing for animal goods or products, or compost or other such means. And afterwards, uh, those channels will be run by our operation to provide productive outputs uh, generated from this uh, waste at scale. And this is very important because in aggregation, it'll make the economies of scale worthwhile to pursue in offering this logistical service. In Canada, 58% of food produced is thrown away or lost, a lot of which is avoidable. This waste generates 56.6 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent gas emissions, costing the Canadian economy $49 billion annually. The total food wasted equals about 11.2 million tons of edible food, equating to 1.2 million garbage trucks full of food. Food waste is generated in every step of the supply chain of food. While a majority occurs on a household level, we are seeking to address food waste that occurs from retail businesses, which makes up 12% of the total food waste produced. In retail, Food waste occurs the most often with produce such as fruits and vegetables, and other areas such as seafood, meats, baked goods, and even ready-made food. The reason for this waste is a plethora of miscalculations, expiry dates, and simply due to food not meeting cosmetic standards. So why haven't food retailers fixed this problem that is contributing to climate change? The answer is both simple and complicated. Firstly, no formal widespread programs exist in Canada that address retail food waste specifically. Programs that do exist are not organized or lack scalability to fully reduce the impact of food waste generated from retail businesses. Secondly, food waste management along the supply chain, especially in early stages, is hard to implement, has high costs, and is simply logistically improbable for large retail businesses. However, the fact of the matter is that trend of food waste is increasing, and businesses that lose a third of inventory to waste are not sustainable in the long run. Innovative solutions must address this issue in a way that is profit-centered, but most importantly, sustainable. The heart of our business model is in the scale of which it operates at. At a low level, it's very difficult to offer a logistical service similar to the one we're proposing because the relative amount of value generation from waste on a per ton basis is relatively minimal. However, when you scale it up and aggregate it to large retailers across an entire geography, what happens is it makes the production of uh, useful outputs that generates revenue from this solid food waste uh, to be more viable. For instance, if you were to collect thousands of tons of organic food waste and compost it at a centralized facility, it would be much more economically efficient than doing it on a small scale on the order of just a couple of tons per year. And this is where the heart of our business model lies. Waste is generated in large amounts. We offer a very scalable, easy solution to retrieve that waste. And we solve for and change that waste into productive 
outputs at a large scale. The value we propose to retailers is rather simple through four main ways. The first is the low logistical overhead for the service we propose. The retailers we serve won't need to invest in additional infrastructure or staff to operate this. Rather, we'll operate under the Frito-Lay service model where our own employees uh, run trucks and other services that go to the stores to retrieve waste as needed. Secondly, this solution will provide some degree of revenue regeneration. When retailers throw out their waste right now, uh, they don't receive any compensation for it. However, we'll offer retailers a very modest amount of cash compensation uh, in return for uh, having access to their organic waste. Thirdly, this will also improve access to fresh food products for consumers. If retailers are able to get some degree of revenue by throwing away old organic goods, they'll be able to reduce the product shelf life on average. And lastly, this will also improve ESG metrics for the retailers we serve. On a similar note, we've also found that no existing solutions exist that offer high value generation for bin products on the same scale and simplicity as we do. Uh, for the most part, uh, current solutions either have excessively high costs, which includes building stuff from the ground up or using current third party service solutions. And on the other hand, uh, alternative options such as donations and decrease in uh, sale prices uh, come with reputational risk uh, and don't generate much additional revenue. We recognize that our operations will have a significant decrease on greenhouse gas emissions through four main ways. The first is through our large scalable infrastructure, which would be optimized to handle the logistics of massive waste retrieval services. This will decrease emissions uh, from running operations that otherwise smaller operations would have. Secondly, we'll also be reducing the amount of organic waste that goes into landfill. As organic waste breaks down, methane gas is reduced. So if we're able to reduce the amount of organic waste going to landfill, we'll be consequently reducing methane gas emissions. Thirdly, many of our waste products will be recycled for reuse in agricultural circumstances, which would decrease the need for overall food production and consequently greenhouse gas emissions since agriculture is a massive sector of emissions. And lastly, there will be many ancillary benefits from our uh, various outreach channels that will decrease emissions. For instance, the increase in compost will encourage more gardening and other activities that reduce emissions. As part of our analysis, we conducted detailed financial analysis into the feasibility of this business model. We identified two sources of revenue that will keep the business viable in the long run. Revenue from carbon offsets, as well as revenue from the sale of selling compost. The following value generation graphic demonstrates how we will be able to be profitable even in the short term. Assuming a 5% market share of retail food waste, in addition to the value of carbon credits and the price of selling compost, our solution is able to generate a net income of $800,000 in its first year of business. Conservative estimates regarding the cost of composting, in addition to general and admin expenses and marketing expenses, demonstrates that there is a value here up for grabs even in the short term. The next slide shows how we plan to scale the business model and what our expectations for the next five years look like. The revenue concentration is expected to have a quarter come from the sale of carbon offsets, with the remainder coming from selling compost. With sufficient scale, revenue and income can grow at a significant rate. Our conservative analysis shows growth at a CAGR of 50% for revenue and income, respectively speaking. Our five-year projections are showcased in this slide. We anticipate initial growth from 2021 to 2023 to occur at a high rate and then slowly taper down as we achieve a plateau of market share. The increasing rate of waste generated is expected to grow our revenue, as well as increasing market share. For the sake of conservatism, our current estimates assume that no cost efficiencies will be generated, but it is likely that efficiency will be improved as we scale the operations. 
margins of a respective 7% demonstrate financial viability. And along with reducing waste, we have the potential to continuously generate income. After having completed a risk assessment on our solution, we have come up with three primary risks that we believe should be monitored for the future success of our business. The first one being demand seasonality. This risk exists on the basis that the, that the demand for compost can be very seasonal uh, due to the fact that only in the fall and summer months are temperatures really warm enough for the decomposition process to be most efficient or at its quickest. So in these winter months when demand starts to taper off, it can have drastic effects in our future revenue model as well as the financing needs we might have as a business. Uh, next, looking at market fluctuations. This mostly relates to our uh, business within operating with carbon credits. Given that carbon credits are a publicly traded security, both adverse economic changes as well as any adverse climate changes that can affect the market for carbon credits could drastically drive down their price and hypothetically cut off one of our main sources of revenue. Finally, the carbon credit market is also not very regulated, so any government oversight or lack thereof could have drastic effects on the way we operate within these markets. Next, uh, looking at some overall risk mitigants for what the risks we have identified, uh, we believe demand seasonality can be mitigated by the fact that we provide a purpose-built, technologically driven solution, which allows food producers and waste producers worldwide to be able to connect to our solution, thus eliminating the seasonality that may exist in one part of the world as we're able to connect to producers all over the world who could be in high demand for compost any time during the year. Next, looking at market fluctuation, this is easily mitigated on the basis that we have a very diverse revenue model, given that carbon credits only make up a, port, a smaller portion of our revenue and our actual operations with waste producers may, uh, maintain a, a higher proportion of our revenue. So we believe that even if the carbon credit market were to behave somewhat adversely, not all of our revenue is gone given that we're well diversified through other means. And finally, looking at regulation, when regulation does come within the carbon credit industry, we believe that having a strong governance policy as well as being very vigilant as to future regulatory changes will allow us to stay on top of any changes coming and so that both our business and our customers are able to evolve at the same time and we're able to stay ahead of any changes that may come in the future and we're able to oper operate as efficiently as possible regardless of whatever changes occur.